Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's John Register. Thank you so much for jumping in on your day. I know that everybody's busy out there, so I'll, you know, watch the replay if you have to. But oh my gosh, we have such an amazing man that's on. We we did a show last night, um, so go check that one out. It's pinned to the profile on LinkedIn, uh, and we had Ryan uh, Nicewinder. He just got back from Tokyo and the Paralympic Games, where they where the, the U.S. men won the gold medal in men's basketball. It was a fantastic interview. So make sure that you check that one out. So you are on once again with John Register, and these are uh, conversations with uh, Mind Sight Warriors. These are, you were hurtling adversity and we're talking Mind Sight Warriors. Why? Because mindset is where we are and Mind Sight is where we desire to be, where we can see ourselves uh, in a future state. So welcome on board and for this uh, the show today. And of course, I know that everybody's going to be watching on the replay because this could, this could be off the charts. I'm your host, John Register, and I am an international keynote speaker. Uh, I am a, a professional in that area, a change mindset warrior myself. And so we have a whole crew that's out there that are mindset warriors. And I help business professionals to actually hurdle their adversity, amputate their fear, embrace a new normal mindset to win the medals that are in their lives. So we are going to get ready to get started on this show. Uh, this is the show where you get up close and personal with people who have just done some amazing things. I mean, our guest today has been all over the media. You know, he's been sponsored by some of the most amazing individuals that really have believed in what he does. And so it's no different than anybody else. You can do the same thing too. It's just who's in your circle and, and, and can you come up with something original that's to you? And I think all of us can. Why? Because all of us are originals. <laughs> so we don't need to copy anybody else. We can be who we are uh, and show up because when we when we do that, we allow we allow other people to release uh, to who they are. Go out and visit my website. It's johnregister.com, just like cash register, johnregister.com. All my social media handles are out there. So make sure you are, are jumping in on that one. We are uh, streaming live right now on LinkedIn Live. So thanks for that platform. Facebook group, we're, we're moving out in that one too. Uh, we changed the name from Amputate Fear to Mindsight Warriors uh, because that's what you all are. You are just shifting the game. Uh, we're on, we're streaming also on YouTube. Uh, and then we have a podcast that's going out. We're getting that podcast up and running. And so we want to know where you're listening from. Uh, are you on the podcast? Or are you on Facebook? Where, where, what group are you listening to? And then we want you to just put a, make a note in the comment so that I get a chance to see it and then we get to elevate your voice. Uh, in the community as well. I have a book out there called 10 Power Stories to Impact Any Leader. Journal Your Way to Leadership Success is out on Kindle, so make sure you're picking that one up. And share it, share, 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 share. So we've got, we got share in the chat, share in the, and to your, your, your audience, your own audience. Uh, just continue to share uh, this if you find it, if you're on YouTube, uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so that we are pushing forward. Uh, so who am I for those that are just coming on? Uh, I am, an individual that at 529, I was an Olympic class hurdler. Lynn Keir is back on, oh my gosh, coming in once again, hot. You're a twofer, Lynn, you were on yesterday, so thank you so much for being on uh, yesterday with, with Ryan. What a great conversation, and we have another great conversation coming on right now, and so coming in from Charlotte, North Carolina, all right. Uh, so two, two time uh, two Pair, you athlete, TV. Pair, you uh, is, TV. Well. get out of here. Pair, get out of here. And so we got two time, two sport Paralympic athlete, uh, and, and so I, I had an injury that wound up um, uh, having uh, an amputation to my left leg. And my wife tells me in my lowest moment, we're going to get through this together. This is just our new normal. And so I began retooling from that and became a two-time, two-sport Paralympic athlete, won a silver medal in the long jump in Sydney, Australia, and really started with all these individuals. They kept calling me to say, how did you do it? How did you overcome it? I had no clue. But after you know years of kind of thinking about it, I came up with a process, this journey from our fear to our freedom, from our mindset to our mindset. And now I teach that to business professionals all across the globe. We just got the call. I've been waiting for it all year long, well, since March of this year, uh, from our U United States uh, Department of State to go to Dubai. Can't wait. Once again, we're going to go in December for the International Day of Disability. So I'm really stoked about that to see my friends over there once again. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful part of the, of the world. If you ever get a chance to go, great individuals, great people. Uh, so I, I'm just I'm just stoked. So uh, Alice and I will be on a jet plane. Don't know when we'll be back again. Uh, so here we go. Uh, so what else? Uh, each guest has done similarly. They have, they have really risen to a level, what I call, that they became a warrior and how they got to the place to where they are. 
Uh, so again, I should have the information out there, push it, push it, push it. Uh, so let me, uh, without further ado, introduce our guest for today. He is a former Alabama state trooper, an Air Force veteran and world renowned chess champion. Uh, he is the author of the number one bestseller, One Move at a Time, How to Win at Chess and Life. He is the founder of Be Someone, a Georgia-based uh, nonprofit that provides youth-focused leadership skills using the game of chess as the teaching tool. He has uh, traveled across America, engaged in his curriculum with over 55,000 youth, and he has been uh, supported by the likes of Jane Fonda, Tyler Perry, and Steve Harvey. Uh, he has appeared on Good Morning America, the CBS Early Morning Show, CNN, and Fox and & Friends. Uh, so please welcome the visionary, the living legend, the master strategist, Oren Checkmate Hudson. Welcome, my brother. How you doing? Well, I need to I need to hire you as my traveling agent because uh, I've never heard that bio before. Where'd you get that information from? That's hey. uh, amazing. <laughs> I'd, I'd be I'd be coming. I'll be digging. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. So I'm at, I'm at eighty. I'm at eighty-eight thousand kids instead of fifty-five. But God is good. Eighty-eight thousand youth. I mean, think of the impacts that that has had. Have you seen how? You know, what's the what's the like memorable stories of those that I call them echoes? So ripples go out from us. Echoes return back to us. So somebody is like, you know, the uh, the, the the nine lepers. One turns the ten lepers. One turns back and says, "Thank you." Right. So what tell me that story of somebody coming back and saying, oh, my gosh, you know, uh, checkmate, you just you just changed my life with your curriculum. And now I'm off doing this other strategies for, you know, high level business and function. One of my one of my students uh, called me and said, coach, I, based on what you shared with me, I made twenty thousand dollars in, in, in one day. So I'm teaching wow. young people how to recognize patterns how to think things through, how to choose peace instead of violence, but how to be a good human being, yeah. be a giver, not a taker, just serve people. You know, oh, no man, oh, no person, anything but to love them. And mm -hmm. so just be a giver and make sure that you doing everything in your power to uplift, inspire everyone you meet everywhere you go. So you are well on your way because you, your goal, one of your goals is to reach a million at risk youth uh, using kind of mot the motivating mantra, get your heads up, pants up, grades up, most of all, never give up no matter what. Yeah. So what, no so, so what drives you? Well, just, just uh, what it drives me is I get a, teaching the children makes my heart sing. And mm -hmm. I, I get a kick out of sharing what I know that has helped me so that other people can wake up winning. I'm teaching people how to wake up winning. Mm -hmm. Don't do the first thing that pops in your head. Your first crack could be a whack and you can't take it back. So think before you act. Wow. So when, you, when, you're, when you're talking about you know, the, the thought process, right? Because as we think, so we become. So as, as when we're thinking about that, how are you, you know, infusing that to get, you know, the youth to really listen and and come? I know you have the, the mechanism of, of, of chess and I want to kind of get in how you, you, you picked it up. But, you know, more so in, in your storyline, how are you getting kids to kind of wake up and say, you know, I, I, this is interesting. I, I, I think I like this. Well, we make it learning fun and uh, chess, you get a chance to see your results pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And so we're teaching children that all moves matter and that nothing is missing. And that if you make the right moves, you get the right results. Nature is neutral. Black and white is the same. Don't play the blame game. Play to win. So when we're playing to win, um, you know, what what is it about the game? How, how did you get in, involved in, in understanding that this this ain't checkers? You know, <laughs> this is this is a little bit different. Uh, how did you get involved? Well, you know, I was a, a, I was a, I was a bad kid when I was in my teens. I was in and out of foster homes, and I was hanging with the wrong people. I was in this gang, and they was telling me to do this, you do it, do that, and do it. And so a teacher came out of nowhere and said, "Listen, I'm gonna teach you how to play chess." I said, "I'm a checker guru." He said, "Checkers, you're using half of the board." He said, "Chess, you're using the whole board." He said, "Checkers, there's no females on the board." He said, "Chess." The female is the most powerful piece on the board. Hmm. I said, let's get on with the classes. Yeah. So so what was it about why 
of what uh, that teacher said to you um, that kind of lit you up. I mean, I know you got, you know, checkers are saying you only use half the board because you're trying to get scored, get the other the other side. Uh, and then chess using all the all the all the players um, that are that are you know defending or attacking all all those things. What was it about you know the initial play that captured your attention? Well, it's uh, chess is is it's kind of attractive and it, it kind of it resonated with me. And you using the whole board. And obviously, checkers you use the half of the board. Chess you using every single square on the board. So chess is a brain game. And you win or lose based on the decision that you make. And so chess teaches you pattern recognition. Once you know the pattern, you can plan, you can prepare, you can position, you can predict, you can pivot, you can prosper. And it's about progress. Chess shows you progress right there, right now. And it teaches you how to delay gratification. Don't do the first thing that pops in your head. And you got to pause, you got to ponder, you got to pray before you proceed because you can make one move in life and never recover. Mm -hmm. um so when you're when you're talking about this and you and, the, and something clicks for you in this um who are you starting to play at a, at a young age i mean did you start i mean you said that you were uh kind of in your teen years when you when you found the sport you know some of the folks have been playing since they're you know they since they woke up as, as a kid you know and and uh you know five six years old did you start getting entering into tournament tournaments or you know, what was, I, I, mean, I, I played. I played in the World Open. Uh, won eighty percent of my games in a speed competition. So I've 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 been there, done that, seen some things. But my focus is not necessarily how, uh, teaching children how to compete in tournaments. Although we have tournaments, I'm doing a nine week boot camp where we're teaching a tournament at the end. But mostly, I'm teaching young people how to make good decisions, mm -hmm. how to think things through. Six magic words: take time to think things through mm -hmm. six t's six t's uh so when when you look at those six t's you know take time to think things through um uh how are walk me through something like a strategy that you might use on the board to win on the board maybe it's a delayed gratification and then now you take that delayed gratification to help them think 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 those things through in life what's Show, show me an analogy. Okay. All right. Well, in chessboard, you may have a free queen. Okay. And if you make this move, you have a free queen. Then, oh, you may say, wait a minute. When you see a good move, don't take it. Sit on your hands and look for a better move. Taking the queen is brilliant. And taking the queen, you probably win. But it delay that and look for something even better. Okay. If I don't take the queen, go here. That's checkmate. So sometimes you got to delay and make other moves. In life, let me give you an example. I um, had a gentleman look at my flooring in my training center, and he said, listen, or for me to, to fix your flooring in your training center, it's going to be $25,000. I said, okay, no problem. Got another estimate, $18,000. Got another estimate, $14,000. Got another estimate, $10,000. Got another estimate, $8,000. So don't take the first opinion, you know. You got to think it through. You got to, you know, you got to really research it and, you uh, if you don't, you uh, uh, man mismanage your resources. See, the opposite of wealth is not poor. The opposite of wealth is mismanagement of resources. Poor is just a reflection of how you manage your resources. Mm. And you got to be able to manage your resources properly or you'll lose You'll lose the game. So, you know, if I took the $25,000, I'd have lost $15,000. So you got to think it through so that you don't lose out. Do you think that, you know, because because people are starting, you know, we call it chess or the game of life. Right. Uh, people start out at different levels. People start out, you know, some people uh, I've seen have kind of this, quote unquote, the silver spoon in their mouth and they tank, you know, so they they go down or some people are born silver spoon. They rise. Uh, some people are born with, you know, don't have a lot of means to to uh, to, to actually do and they rise. And some people don't have a lot of means and they they go down. Uh, so it's just not really kind of some of the environments that are really driving it. It's, it's how, what we're doing, like you say, with the resources and, and who comes around us to access those resources. How are you getting kids um, to look at those individuals like you did around them to make the, the better moves in life? Well, surround yourself around people who are where you want to be. Surround mm -hmm. yourself around people who are smarter than you. If you're the smartest person on your team, you need a team. A friend of mine, he lives in California and he said, or he said, you're better than I am and you're a lot better. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, when, when we 
turned 18, my mom gave all of us a million dollars. And she said, me, my brother and my sister, we all got a million dollars. And she said, he said, I'm broke now. He said, because the million dollars made me lazy and I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And so he said, you in a better position than I am because I, it made me lazy and I didn't do anything and now I'm broke. So yeah, you, sometimes you can have the resources and you can mismanagement and it can, it can create problems, but I'm a go-getter. Uh, you drop me off in any city on the planet and I'll be on television doing something, uh, making, making a difference, impacting lives. So we're talking with uh, Oren Checkmate Hudson. Uh, he is just dropping some knowledge on us. I love the six T's that you have there. Uh, you know, so we talk about the, the life lessons uh, that 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 chess is playing. Talk about some of the. You know, I know you're 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 focused in on the youth right now, and that's where you're going. You know, how did you know that you had a skill level? Because you know, I I play against the computer. I play you know sometimes on the on the plane or something, and I still can't figure the game out. You know, so I'm I'm just like I don't. My brain just is not. Uh, understand it. So I, mean, I need to, some lessons from you on how to how to beat my computer. Well, I'm the king of failure. I failed so many times that I've seen that movie before. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard to beat me because I've seen everything. I've lost a lot. And uh, the key to winning in life is to fail your way to success. Failure is vitamin. Make, make failure your vitamin. The more you fail, the smarter you get. And I'm the king of failure. And I've lost so many games that I it's hard to beat me. That's why my middle name is Checkmate. Or in C. Hudson, the C for checkmate. Checkmate means you win. It's not over until you win. So I tell people to embrace failure. Dance with failure. Failure is your friend. Mm -hmm. The biggest mistake you ever can do your entire life is to give up. So stay with it. Stay in the game. Make it okay to fail and get back up with excitement every time you lose. We look at this from the standpoint, I, you know, I have a, a great friend uh, that I, I share every Saturday morning with at 7 o'clock. We have phenomenal conversations. Uh, and uh, she um, uh, is, a, is an applied improver. So she was applied improv to teach businesses, you know, from major companies. I won't throw them out there, but the major, major companies and to learn how to think different about different situations, kind of like what you're doing with, you know, there's many, many moves you can make on, on the board. And so she's doing that in, in kind of this, this arena. And she t always talks about the same thing and they do it with a circus bow. And they throw their hands up after they messed up a line or after they did something that just didn't advance the story forward. And they say, I failed, throw their hands up, and they take a bow and they leave and exit scene, right? Um, so that is where is the difference between failing and giving up and failing and using that as the tool? What are the what are the things that we need to look for in in the in the uh, not succeeding at something? Well, the, the main thing is that you you succeed by learning. Well, how do you learn? You fail. You know, you fail. You fail. Doing it wrong mm -hmm. and make a mistake and failure is the best school for learning. And so it's no such thing as failure. It's only information. Yeah. And the more information you acquire, the more data driven decision, data driven decision means you get the data. Dad, how do you get data? You fail. You get the data. You fail. Data. Failure data. And data is what you need to succeed. So when people throw throwing bricks at you, take those bricks, save those bricks, and build yourself a mansion. Mm, all right, <laughs> I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep on brick mansion. Got it. <laughs> um, so uh, we, we're 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 now moving into a space where uh, the kids, youth, are, are really struggling right now. Um, some are not having to. Um, they don't have they don't have a way to actually articulate what they're thinking to themselves and we're seeing you know some pretty serious uh consequences of decisions that others have made for the students or the children that are kind of going back into school situations uh and they are not listening to the heartbeat of the the, the, the youth and and the youth don't feel like they have a, a way to press back so they're acting out in a different way that we're seeing now in these these struggles, uh, particularly with, with with COVID, and there's some other things as well. But you know, what do I go back to school? Do I not go back to school? Do I mask up? Do I stay home? All these things, and usually that that not that uh, that child that child's decision. It's usually a parent's decision that's making it. Talk to us about um, how you can use uh, the 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 discipline of chess to think through when somebody else is making moves for you. Yeah, I mean, I think discipline, 
Discipline is the key. And just remember this here, every disappointment is a blessing. And and that people read stuff wrong. You got to be able to read what's really happened and just know that obey God and leave all the consequences to him is a mantra that I live by. And mm -hmm. what that means is when bad things happen, look for the silver lining. No matter what happens to you, everybody falls sometimes. You got to have the strength to rise from the ashes and make a new beginning. What that means is you're going to fall. You're going to fail. You're going to suck at something. That's okay. Make it okay to embrace failure. Look for the silver lining and keep moving forward. Gotcha. When, when you were, you know, I, I'd like that. Uh, and the, what I wrote down here is one of the, the, the mantras now that grew out of COVID and going through this process for me was going deeper into a truth. So a lot of my speaker buddies, they were going a lot, they were going broad uh, that were kind of like me. They were going broad and trying to become coaches and these other things. And that's, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just not, you know, I'm not in that space. I can coach speakers. You know, I, I, I'm decent at that. But, uh, but other things, I, I just, that's just not my bag. Right. So I don't, I don't call myself, even though I was called to do like diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, and some things when with the murders of George Floyd, and we had this kind of awakening with Breonna Taylor and Maud Aubrey and seeing this disparity. Uh, but that's really not my thing, right? So I need to turn that over to somebody else who, who is an expert in that. Disability, disability diversity, that's my bag. I can do that. You know, I've, I've studied, I've, I've done the work in it. Uh, and one of the things that I, I have come up with uh, that was dropped into my spirit is when our truth outweighs our fear will commit to a courageous life will commit to courageous acts um when you're looking at the the discipline of chess um what is it to make like uh on the board parallel us a courageous move on the chess board as a parallel move for a courageous move in what we're facing with right now with delta variant and and, and covid and, and those type of issues well, the chessboard, there's no lies on the board. The board is integrity. And if you're true to yourself and you're true to others, you'll win every time. Mm -hmm. So number one, the board is integrity. Let me give you an example. I say I have checkmate in, in two moves and my opponent said, no, no, you don't. No, you don't. And then what I do is go, oh, yeah, it's there. <laughs> well, it was all it was there all along, but they right. don't see what's there. So wow. there's no lies on the board. The board is true. And if you're true to yourself and you're true to others, you'll win every time. And just know that all the answers are on the board. And you got to move away from trouble. Okay. Move away from trouble. If you see something not right, move away from mask up, uh, keep your distance and protect yourself. You know, chess is about protection. You got to protect the king. If you, if you don't protect the king, the game is over because if the king is trapped. The game is over. So protect your king, protect yourself. You are uh, number one. So protect yourself, mask up, stay your distance and make your next move your best move. Get your head up, get your pants up, get your grades up, stay your distance and respect others and treat everyone you meet like the most important person in the world. And if you do that, you'll never fail because we are all are one. We're talking with Orrin Checkmate Hudson uh, on our show right now, a, a mind sight warrior for sure, as he is uh, dropping it. And uh, he, he's, he's trying to corner me, I think, in, onto the board because I'm trying to protect my pieces because he's just dropping so much knowledge right now. Um, you know, we got a couple of people that are on right now. If you have any questions for uh, for Orrin, just uh, for Checkmate, just please drop them in the comment box. Make sure that you are pushing them out on, on social media, wherever you're watching this from, and follow, follow, follow him uh, for what he's doing with us. Uh, so when did you realize that you had this this knack, this gift uh, for it? I mean, I mean, after, after day one, you probably went out teaching people. Um, you probably were learning and losing right so how, how did how did you when did you know that man i could i could do this i got this i was born to do this uh i figured it out when i beat one of the top russian grandmasters in the world his name is rashid ziatanov hmm. and when i beat this top russian grandmaster i did something that was bizarre i did a what we call a sacrifice sacrifice must be made in order to have a breakthrough so what i did was i gave up rook a rook is worth five points for a pawn which is worth one point now it looks like an unfair exchange but that's how you win the game made a rep so it looks like an unfair exchange but that's how you win the game so i gave up five for one and most people say well don't do that that's crazy no it's not because i opened up as king and a few moves later that's checkmate so here's a teachable moment 
Opportunity doesn't knock. Opportunity is solid. And you have to make your move before you're ready. Had I waited one more move, I could not sacrifice that rook. I would have lost the game. So you have to make your move before you're ready. You got to realize and seize the moment. Pattern recognition. Pattern recognition allows you to plan, prepare, position, predict, prosper. But you got to make that move. Everything is about progress. And when you make making progress, you will win. Wow. Uh, so you, you sacrificed a rook. And how did how did you see it, though? How do I mean? I I, patterns, pattern, pattern recognition. Pattern, yeah. Pattern recognition allow you to plan. But, he, but he's got to do something, too. The Russian has to do something, too. So he, yeah, said, he, he, he said, he said, you got me, or yeah, he said, then you can do oh, and then I can do on that. But I had to do it right then. I had to make that move at that exact time, at that right moment. Otherwise, it, that opportunity go away. And that's what people need to remember. There is a window of opportunity for different different opportunities. And if you're not trained to see those up, because the opportunity oftentimes does not. Opportunity is solid. And it's setting by waiting on someone who's trained to see it. Opportunity is in front of people all the time, but they're not prepared to see it. What are some of the, the Super Bowl came, when the Super Bowl came to Atlanta? I'm like, I'm taking advantage of it. People said, "What opportunity? You don't see it. They don't even see it." <laughs> I'm in the Super Bowl on the field making things happen. The guy said, "You paid seventy thousand like me." I said, "No, I ain't paid those. I paid zero. <laughs> the opposite of wealth is not poor. The opposite of wealth is mismanagement of resources. Poor <laughs> is just a reflection of how you manage your resources. Okay, That's just. So, so tell me how you got on there. How did you do it? How did you get on the field? I can't, I can't give out a seven thousand oh, dollar thing like now? that, man. You got to sign up for my coaching program, but I will say this to you. I saved a lady the other day $36,000. Wow. I saved myself about $15,000 this week. I mean, you just got to you gotta know the patterns. I'm in, I mean, I just saved myself about 10 minutes ago about maybe $119 on a deal on transaction that I know because I knew the pattern. And once you know the pattern, I know, I said, I know what's going to happen. Boom, boom, boom. And so that's how you win. And one, one of the things I do to make money in the, is I help other people. You only going to be successful based on the other mother, more people you make successful. And a lady called me the other day. She said, oh, my God. She said, you saved me last time. Or oh, I'm about to do this. What should I do? So my next book is going to say, my next book is hold up and wait before you make a mistake. I show people how to save time, energy, and money. I show people how to wake up winning. Wow, and 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 beaten, whooping up on the grandmaster. I, I beat five. several. I beat several grandmasters, <laughs> and it's it's not that I'm. I I have no title. Right. I have zero title. Moses had a testimony. Pharaoh had a title. Titles doesn't work. I don't have a title, but I will say I am blessed by the best, and I get a kick out of up, up, uplifting and inspiring other people to be someone. I came up with the name Be Someone because Abraham Lincoln, his mother, her last words on her deathbed before she died to Abraham Lincoln was Be Someone. And even though Abraham had failed many times running for public office, Abraham Lincoln took those two words, Be Someone, all the way to the White House. My assignment in life is empower our young people to be someone. Get your head up, get your pants up, get your grades up. And the big one, never give up. Your mind is a pearl. You can change the world. Nothing is missing. You have everything you need to win the game. Wow! All right, we're gonna we're gonna jump into the uh, my, my my rapid fire questions right now. So we're gonna change we're gonna change it up. Whoop, there we go. We're gonna get you real close, something close and personal uh, on this one. So I'm gonna ask you ten. Uh, not really. I'm gonna ask you a few questions. Re they're really easy, um, but uh, they don't really require too too much too much thought with it. But it, it's just kind of qu quick little things. Just kind of go a little deeper, and then you can you know if something comes in your mind, you can ask me a, a question as well, and 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 maybe I'll answer them. So, so here we go. Here we go. Most common opening move. Most common, uh, the pawn in front of your king, which is called e4. E4. Okay. Number of moves it took you to beat an opponent. The least number of moves. Two, two moves. I beat to one on national TV and two moves. It's called fool's mate. You can Google me. You can Google the CBS national news. I checkmated my opponent in two moves, and it was on camera. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and I bet the grandmaster like, oh, he done. He done. <laughs> that dude done. Um, in, in the game, uh, who do you never take for granted? Your opponent. Never underestimate your opponent. Mm. Uh, best youth player you have seen in the past five years? 
Uh, there's an eight-year-old kid called Tiny in New York. He's homeless, came from Africa. He lives in New York. He's amazing. Wow. Fastest uh, speeding ticket you administered? Uh, the highest ticket I ever wrote? Well, I, I'm a I'm a nice guy. I, I've clocked clock, clock people at 106, but I may not put that on the ticket because I don't want the judge to lock them up. Yeah. So uh, I probably clocked some 100, 106, but I didn't put it on the ticket because – I ain't want the guy to get locked up. So I try to, I, I yeah. treat people like it's me. I said, bro, if I put, you know, hundred, the judge going to lock you up. I'm telling you. So <laughs> let me help you out. Let me bump this down some so that you don't get knocked in the head. Yeah. So I just try to treat people like it's me because that person is me. Uh, how do you explain what you do to an eight-year-old? I guess you had to do with this tiny from uh <laughs> I use the game of chess to teach young people how to make their next move their best move. Awesome. Uh, and who, who inspired, uh, well, oh, before that one. Uh, what your 85 year old self tells yourself right now? Uh, uh, you 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 reached your dream. You live in your dream, and you have a lot of people that you have shared things with them so that they can win. Congratulations! Keep up. The, uh, you well done, my good and faithful servant. Ooh, well, you just said a word right there. Uh, that that that's my that's my guiding light right there. North Star. Uh, who inspires you the most? Uh, I'm inspired by Jesus. I'm inspired by just Jesus uh, and, you know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> I love it. Um, so we were, that. so that's that's my, those are my 10 uh, questions, or not actually nine, uh, eight, eight questions uh, for you. You got any for me? And, I, and I'll. Uh, uh, so what made you get into being a motivational speaker? What inspired you? Yeah, so it's, it was it was a youth program. I was actually working for the United States Army and uh, as a civilian, so I had done six years of service. And I was now working for the Army and the Army's world class athlete program. Went down to Homa, Louisiana, and I was uh, at, at these high schools with about six military athletes. And I would just do an introduction to each athlete, act as the MC. But in between, I would tell a little story, a little joke. I would talk about my artificial leg. And then I would go back to Virginia, where I was living at the time. The, um, the recruiters, we're getting telephone calls back from the high school principals saying, who was that one legged guy that was down here talking to the kids? And so they, they called me up and said, Hey, these, these, these principals want you back down here. And then they said the magic words, uh, we'll pay you. Yeah, how much you charge? <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I, said, I said, Oh, you can get paid to speak. Um, so that, be, that began me, you know, not too soon after that, I, I started, um, a small company called Inspired Communications International. And it really was just, you know, I would go out and just tell my story. And that was, that was kind of it. I didn't have any formal, I, I mean, I had some formal training in college, but I wasn't practicing it. I wasn't engaged with it. I would just put things together. So Willy that's nilly. How I started. Yeah. Willy nilly. We was, yeah, it was, it was out there. <clears throat> but now what I did, you know, when you say, you know, make your next move your best move, the things that were in me had already prepared me for that moment which I didn't know was there. So I didn't even know this moment was an opportunity. But when the opportunity came, I was able to respond because I had all of these, you know, I had the, um, I had the acumen inside of me, right? So what, what that means is, you know, Malcolm Gladwell talks, talks about these 10,000 hours and all these, these things. Um, what I had was I had played cello in orchestra. So I performed on stage. I was in, you know, three or four choirs in high school. I was on stage. Uh, I was, you know, reading uh, the, the the notes from my dad, who was a Presbyterian minister, on uh, on stage. So I was already doing things in front of audiences, and so in front of an audience really wasn't that big of a deal. I didn't have stage fright, except for the first time, you know, my dad told me when I got up in eighth grade, I had to do an eighth grade speech, and I was ter so terrified, I was crying before I even walked out of the house. Didn't want to go to school that day. I'm six, so, you know, fever. You know, I'm, I'm heating up the I'm heating up the the the, the little. Um, Thing put on your tongue, the, the the thermometer thing on your tongue. So I'm 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 doing all that, trying to heat it up. And when my mother saw, you know, doing my temperature, my temperature was like at 115 degrees. She says, "Yeah, I don't I don't think you think you probably be dead. So you're gonna go to school right now." <laughs> 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 so, you know, uh, so it was it was stuff like that. And so I, I think everything in our life, and I, I teach youth right now to make sure, kind of like you do, is to make sure every single thing you're doing is valued. Right. It's it's value to. So make that a brick. Take it 
and start stacking and, and building, like you said, build your mansion as you are going along in life. The, the one thing I do for for athletes now, Olympians, Paralympians primarily, uh, and then some, some military veterans, uh, is to get them to see their transition moments before the moment actually occurs. So start putting those pieces in place before the moment actually gets there. And so exactly what you're saying with you know, on the on the on the chessboard, right? It's it's seeing the move before the move, uh, and and it's it's powerful because most don't. Most get they they got checkmate, and all of a sudden they're the one that in the, in the, you know it's, it's their king that was taken, right? So they they come in their career. Brett Favre comes in his career, and he no longer he's he's so tied to the team that he has nothing else outside. So he get, begins playing for other teams, and past a little bit past his prime. Whereas Jim Brown, he, he leaves at the top of his career because he sees other opportunities besides playing in the National Football League. So th there are there are people that stay past their their welcome or their prime, and there are others that you know they they bow out gracefully at the at the peak of theirs. Uh, and I think you know seeing the moves ahead of the move is is when we can you know kind of choose how we're going to leave instead of letting the game choose how we we're, we're going to leave. Yes, sir. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, so that's that's kind of my long winded answer to <laughs> how I got in the speaking game. Um, I, I will say that I, I where I struggle is there's so many there's so many coaches out there now that. I don't you know, when I watch what they do, um, they're really not coaching. They're, they're trying to earn a revenue. And so I've I've stayed away from that. So I really don't. I haven't really. Don't I did I haven't really you know uh, really entered into the coaching space. I do it kind of on the side to a few people that call me, and the results they're getting they're saying wow it's, you're you're over the top. I mean I I I, I, I can't believe I paid somebody else you know whatever the money they paid that person to get the what I gave them in like thirty minutes. So I don't often look at the value of what I'm giving. I think it's just it's reciprocal. It's always going to come back to me in some other form, right? It might not be, you know, a client. But I am thinking about doing a little bit more in the coaching space on speakers, um, just because I, I have a system. Like you say, you have a system. You have you recognize patterns, and I recognize the pattern now for speakers uh, on how to um, how to elevate their speaking game and. And there's a there's a specific move that I I have them do, which I don't give away right there, right? Because that, that's the that's the secret sauce. But I have to do a specific move, and if they don't do this move, if and it's, it's it has everything to do with how somebody responds to them, and if they can't get this move down, you cannot advance in the course. You can't you can't move forward. You're stuck because you'll you'll your baseline has not been built. You have not done the work to actually elevate, right? So uh, you got to do the you got to do the move. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and some people, you know, if, if, if it separates who's serious and who's not, right? Because I don't want to work with anybody that's not serious. That's that's a waste of my time. I don't want to yes. take the money. I want I want you to succeed so that you can act, I can lose gigs to you. That's what I want to see happen. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so everybody, we're talking with uh, the amazing Orange Checkmate Hudson. Wow. Um, Hey, is there anything else that I like left out? Because I'm just so you know I got blind. Well, it's be someone dot uh, You know, if you want to be a part of the team, we're looking for people the the wants to be a part of helping young people change lives. Also, I teach senior citizens on Thursdays and Tuesdays from one o'clock Eastern to one fifty, and children I teach on Saturdays from eleven a.m. to twelve. So children on Saturdays every Saturday and and well, senior citizens. Senior citizens on Tuesdays and Thursdays on Zoom call. On Zoom call. So be someone.org has more information. Be so someone.org. Uh, be someone.org. Be someone.org. Somebody put that in the chat box. Be someone.org. We'll put that in the show notes as well uh, for Orange Checkmate Hudson. Hey, thanks so much for, for being on the show today. Uh, wow. Uh, learned a ton. You know, I'm looking up. Wake up winning. I love that one. Uh, all moves matter. Look, that's, that's a good play right there. Um, and then you're, you're opening. What'd you say? Was it? Was it uh, Pawn Five? What did you say? Was the opening move? I can't six, remember. Six T's. No, oh, no, no. E four. E four. E four is the pawn in front of the king. Move it up two squares. And e the reason being that allows you to get your bishop and your queen out, and you can checkmate your opponent in four moves if he's not paying attention. <laughs> I, I want to try that on you. 
<laughs> no, it won't work on me. It won't work on me. I, I, I play this game while others merely try. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being on. It was great seeing you in Washington, D.C. with uh, our friend, Dr. Avis Jones, the Weaver. You know, I, I loved how you were just interacting and showing people with your massive chessboard out there uh, in the hallway. You know, what moves, why, 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 how do we say how to how make your best move the best move, right? The next move the best move. So I, I love how, how you were putting that out there for everyone. So thank you for once again for for being on the show. We really appreciate you. And thank you, John. Uh, we got to have you come back as well. Appreciate it, John. I appreciate you. Absolutely. All right, everybody. So that is Oren Checkmate Hudson. Wow. Did you learn something today? I mean, I did. I, I'm learning all kinds of stuff from, th from this guy. Uh, so I hope that you learned something as well. So thanks so much to, to Oren for that. So I'm going to end the show right now. Uh, so that does it for Hurdlers of Adversity Conversation with Mindset to uh, and Mindsight Warriors. Uh, listen, I, I'll be on KPPF Radio tomorrow. I have the show Tactical Advantage with your host, John Register. It's now streaming live on the podcast channel, Podbean. So look at that. 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, we uh, put that out there. Again, the, the book, 10 Power Stories to Impact Any Leader, Journal Your Way to Leadership Success. That's out on Kindle. And we have the Facebook group, of course, and it's uh, facebook.com slash groups slash Mindsight Warriors, Mindsight Warriors. Uh, and then we got another guest that's going to come up for next week. Uh, I got to figure out who that is because uh, I, I have the person's name, but I don't have the I don't have it in my show notes right now. So make sure you're tuning in. We're going to be all over the map because right now the the speaking has picked up uh, significantly, and the, the regular time that I usually do this at three o'clock in the afternoon on Thursdays are no longer working for the next month. So we'll be kind of scattered. So just work with us, bear with us, watch the show notes so, so you know. Uh, in, the, in the channel, follow me so you know when, when these, these are going to hit. And then go back, of course, and watch a little bit later on uh, as well. So remember, you're the inspirations. Inspirations are the catalyst to motivation. Motivation, in turn, causes actions. Actions lead us to transformational results. And these results, they re-inspire us or they allow someone else that's watching the process to catch the vision. Uh, folks, for Mindsight Warriors and Maximizers, hey, what's going on? Oh, my gosh, the Burt Nash is on. What is going on, brother? I can't believe it. Did you? Uh, were you on, or did you get a chance to hear Orin? I hope you. I hope you did. If you didn't, go go back and, and rewind the tape. Burton Nash, of course, we ran track and field together when I was way back in the day in high school when I was a teenager. Uh, so so you are the mindset words out there. Go forth, inspire your world. We'll see you back here next week. We will be on next Thursday, but sometimes during the week I'm going to have special guests because we, the Tokyo Games for the Paralympics just ended, and I'm trying to get these these folks who just got back from Tokyo. To, uh, to, to, te to teach us what they learned as they were quarantined over there. And if they stepped out of the room, you know, they didn't get a chance to compete. So uh, that that's pretty severe for what we're all doing this right now. Uh, awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Bert. Pre appreciate you, sir. And we have Link here. Thank you for being on. Lynn. I know you got probably a lot to do this morning as well. So we'll talk to you next week. And my name is John Register saying go forth, inspire your world. We'll see you later. Bye for now.